Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another AITA story for you. This one is called, Am I the Askinaut for Refusing to Let My Daughter Go to Dinner with Her Boyfriend's Family? On the surface, it seems a bit harsh, but let's see how this goes. I-38 female have a daughter, 17 female. A couple of weeks ago, her boyfriend, 19 males, family, went on a day hike. They asked my daughter to come. All of them, including my daughter, love to hike. I didn't think it would be an issue and let her go. I was wrong. From what the Forest Service guy told me, Along with what my daughter said, there was a rock slide halfway up the trail. Whoa! My daughter fell and got hurt. Her boyfriend's family decided to finish the hike to the top and come back later to help her down, even after my daughter told them she was in horrible pain. After a couple of hours, the Forest Service Ranger, FSR, found her. He loaded her on a four-wheeler and helped her down the hill. Oh, so they just left her there all alone. Cool. The FSR called me. I immediately came. We left a note on boyfriend's car along with the FSR stayed in the area to let them know that my daughter was taken to the hospital. The whole way to the hospital, she was sobbing. Not only from the pain, but because they left her. It deeply hurt her. She broke her foot and ankle in three places. She needed surgery. The two days she was in the hospital. They didn't check on her once. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Should have done it a minute ago. We saw their post and photos on social media from the top of the mountain, talking about what a great time they had, seeing how hurt she was. We spoke to our daughter about what happened and what she wanted from this relationship. She told us she didn't want to be with her boyfriend anymore. She sent her boyfriend a text saying she was breaking up with him. After a flood of messages, we all blocked him and his family. Six days ago, we started getting notes taped to our cars, doors, some left for her in the office at school. Yesterday, the ex-boyfriend came to the house. I opened my main door but left my security screen door closed, talking through it. He asked if his family could take my daughter to dinner as an apology. Since his family didn't think what they did was wrong, but he loved her and his family wanted to clear the air between them. This is probably where I am the asshole. I flat out told him he is not allowed to take my daughter anywhere. I stressed since he chose to leave my daughter when she was hurt, I no longer trusted him to be around her then shut the main door before he could say anything else. Now some of our mutual friends are saying that I'm the asshole for not allowing them to make it up to our daughter and closing the door on him. Am I allowing my mama bear judgment of this 19-year-old cloud the right thing to do here? Am I the asshole? Thoughts? I have some. I have some thoughts. So the initial question was, am I the asshole for refusing to let my daughter go to dinner with her boyfriend's family? Which, on the surface of just that question without the context, sure, seems a little harsh. But, as a dad, with daughters, if you allow one of my girls to get hurt, we already have an issue. If you allow one of my girls to get hurt and then leave them behind on a trail, we got big issues. And hell no, hell no, you're not allowed to take my daughter anywhere else because last time that happened, she was injured, not saying the injury was his fault or his family's fault, but leaving her behind when she's hurt, foot and ankle broken three places, is inexcusable. This is unacceptable. And the trust at that point is completely broken. And if it had just been a 19 year old, there are stupid kid mistakes. There are stupid teenager mistakes. His family chose to keep going up the effing trail. They have been to the top of the mountain and it's filled with assholes. No, man. I mean, trust is completely broken at that point. You don't get to take her anywhere. If there's an apology to be had, yeah, they need to apologize to her, obviously. There needs to be a big apology to her. This 19-year-old Brozo should have apologized to Mama Bear immediately because, yes, whenever you take someone's child to go do something, again, the injury, I'm not saying it was his fault, but don't protect them when they are hurt. Don't care for them. Don't help them get assistance. You owe everybody an apology. We don't get the family's perspective here at all. We just hear that the boyfriend showed back up. They wanted to take her to dinner. There probably should have been a phone call from his mom to Mama Bear here to be like, look, here's what happened. We're so sorry. Blah, 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 blah. But that didn't happen at all. The creepy stalker approach with the notes taped to cars and that kind of crap isn't going to cut it. I hate to use the term, but homeboy needs to man up here and come make a formal apology to the parents, to her, before anything is going to happen. And no, he can expect you to be okay with him taking her anywhere now. Can't. Just can't. Bears are a thing. Trails. Wildlife is a thing. And if you're injured, if they had left her with some self-defense tools, it still wouldn't be okay, but at least they would have done something. But the only way that this would be acceptable to leave her there is if she was only with one person, there was no cell reception right there, and they had to get to a point where they could call for help and then come right back to her. That's the only time that leaving her at all would have been acceptable. And even then, it's a little sketchy. 
It's like you got to try to carry her with you or do something. So ah, a big old sorry, I'm an asshole apology needs to happen here. No, Mama Bear, you are not the asshole at all. Ironic choice of Mama Bear there because the first thing I thought of was Bear. What would happen? You take one of my girls out to a trail. They get injured and you leave them behind in any kind of not just predatory animal, but humans. You can't leave a young girl out alone without the ability to get away. Come on. Come on, man. Come on! The humans are the worst ones out there. No, not the asshole at all. Brozo boyfriend has a lot of groveling to do here, and I really think that the family needs to step up and take some responsibility for their actions and reach out and apologize, not just to her, but to you as well. And <laughs> if some boy ever treats one of my daughters like this, I'll invite him in. Sit. Let's have a chat. <sighs> that one got me a little pissed off, not gonna lie. <laughs> Hey there again, it's Dusty Thunder with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the ass cannot for holding a grudge against my dad who took my step siblings to Paris, but not me. A few weeks ago, I learned from my stepbrother's TikTok that my dad, stepmom, and two brothers are in Paris. I was staying with my mom at the time. I'm female 16 and would have loved to be there, but they didn't even tell me they were going. I immediately sent a text to my dad asking if they're enjoying their time in Paris. And despite reading it, he didn't reply until late that night. Then he tried to play dumb and said it's great and he wished I could be there. Yeah, me too. So I replied that he could have taken me and he said it wasn't possible and we'll talk about it later. So when they returned, I told them that I'm hurt that they didn't take me. My dad took me aside and told me that their finances are very tight. This vacation was a gift from stepmom's parents and that they only bought it for my dad, their daughter, and their own grandchildren and not me. Oh no! No, 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 no. He reminded me that I shouldn't act in an entitled way. They were effectively guests. Even though the grandparents weren't there, they just paid for it. And I wasn't invited, so I shouldn't act in an entitled way. I wasn't convinced. They could have refused to go without me, paid for me themselves, gone somewhere cheaper, stayed a little less longer, or asked my mom to pitch in, and she would have. Me not being there was exclusionary. If this was only about money, they could have made it work. So I told my dad that I was disappointed in him. So came last night, and my stepmom's parents come over for dinner. The subject of the vacation came up, and everyone was talking about it, and I was just sitting there being quiet until I thanked them for doing such a nice thing for the family, while my dad looked at me in a frowny way. Everyone went quiet. My dad tried explaining that I should have understood that this was a very expensive gift. I'm acting like an entitled brat and should go to my room if I can't behave myself. I said it doesn't seem like I belong anyway and told them to enjoy your family dinner and left. Later, the grandmother came to my room and tried explaining that they gifted this to their grandchildren and couldn't afford to include me as well. She said they initially only had a budget for three, their daughter and grandchildren, but stretched themselves to four to include my dad as well. But while they wished they could have done it for me, they really could not stretch it to five. So I told her my problem is with my dad and I have no beef with her, but she doesn't get to act like she cares about me either and it's okay. I was like, I'm a stranger to you and you don't care about me, so have some balls, put your big girl pants on and wear it on your sleeve and ask her to get the out of my room. She left and I heard her telling my dad that I was very rude to her so I'm grounded until further notice. Am I acting like an entitled brat and am I the asshole in this situation? Edit, not that it's relevant, but step grandmother's comment about trying to include me but not being able to work out the budget was nonsense. They're very rich and this was an excuse and she was taking me for a fool. But this is not relevant to me holding a grudge against my dad. I'm only specifying it for clarity. That's the end of that story. There are times when it's okay to be rude. There are times when it's okay to be firm and and maybe firm's the word we need to use instead of rude, because I think from the parental perspective, anytime you see this kind of attitude, and I'm sure I'm guilty of this as well, most parents are, especially of parents with teenagers, it's probably more in the face than anything. The face wind up to deliver a line makes it seem way more rude than it probably is intended to, because they haven't learned to control that part of it yet. Maybe tone as well, but there is a difference between firm and rude, and she was being firm because she had boundaries. Those were firm boundaries and she was standing by them. If she came across rude, I don't think that she meant to. She was defending herself. She was defending her stance and again, as a parent, when your child does that, you know, it may feel rude and disrespectful and I think that's probably 
the trigger word here is they probably felt disrespected because they're the elders or whatever. Putting myself in OP's father's position. And we have a blended family, so I think I can envision this. If Candy Thunder's parents said, we're going to send you guys to Paris, but only our biological grandchildren. I know Candy Thunder and I would both be like, F that. We just won't go. Give us the money. We'll find something we can do for all of us. However, we are both extremely fortunate to have parents that immediately welcomed our bonus kids in like they were there from day one. And I understand it's not like that for everybody, but we were extremely fortunate to have that work. This is 100% on the parents because they're allowing an imbalance into a blended family. And when there's an imbalance, everything goes sideways. This is 100% on the parents. They could have said no. And I understand it's like somebody waves parents in front of your face and you're like, oh, I really want to go. Do I want to harm my child to do it? No. OP's parents said yes. Come what may is the path they chose and what came was a big shit storm and their daughter, I think, knows where she stands now. Now, dad is, that's her bio dad. Dang. And he's calling her an entitled brat. He got swept up in being able to go to Paris. That's all there is to it. But in doing so, he has alienated his daughter. And she's 16. This is a very pivotal time because here in a couple of years, you know, if she's going off to college, if she's going out to be independent, to live on her own, to enter straight into the workforce, either way, in just a couple of short years, there's going to be a lot more distance between them. And that distance can either be distance that she is still connected with him or she just says, screw it. I'm not going to make an effort to still have you in my life because you clearly don't value me. And that's the path he's chosen here. And this sucks. Sucks bad. I'm doing that to your kid and making them feel like they just don't matter at 16 years old is setting them up for an early adulthood that's potentially very damaging, very volatile. Imagine turning 18 and having like no one. And I know it's that way for a lot of people, but this is how people get there. What came was a justifiably pissed teen. Hell hath no fury. This would suck. So OP here, who is the 16-year-old girl, no, you are not the asshole for holding a grudge against your dad who took his step-siblings to Paris, but not you. He should have said no. And hid it from you. Oh, You know why? Because he knew it was wrong. <laughs> Again, it's Dusty Thunder, and I have another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for causing a scene and leaving a free vacation over the way my daughter was being treated? So, like, if the dad from the last story had done the right thing, this would have been the subject of his story. But he didn't. My brother Nate and his wife Jen invited me and my daughter Maddie, 10, to go on vacation with them and their kids, Laura, 12, and Danny, 9. Nate and Jen are extremely well off. They both have high paying jobs and earn around 350k between them. Maddie and I are middle class. I own a small house and Maddie goes to a private school. Maddie has a good life, but it doesn't compare to her cousins. This kind of sounds like the Bluey family dynamic. That's an Uncle Stripe. My brother and Jen rented a house for us and paid for the rental, all of the food, and all of the activities. The only thing I paid for was gas when driving myself and Maddie to the house. I also have to say Nate and I don't get along very well, but I have a great relationship with Jen, mostly because of how they are with the kids. Nate tells the kids they don't have to be nice to anyone, never encourages them to share their toys, and doesn't discipline his kids. Jen is the opposite. She constantly tells the kids to share with her cousins and will punish them if they're being rude to the other kids or adults. Now to the vacation. They rented a three-bedroom house. Nate and Jen had the master bedroom. I had the second bedroom with a double bed, and all the kids were going to share a room with two bunk beds, four beds. The first night was pretty rough. The kids brought tons of toys but refused to let Maddie play with them. Jen came in and told them that before she left, she told them they'd have to share their toys, so they either share or she takes them away. They were a little rude, but mostly fine the rest of the night. The second night, Jen went out to dinner with an old friend, and Nate and I were home with the kids. We were getting the kids ready for bed, and an argument broke out between the kids because Laura and Danny decided they don't want to share with Maddie, and told her to sleep on the couch. I expected Nate to tell them that the bedroom was for all the kids, but he told Maddie that she either has to sleep with me or on the couch. Oh no! Uncle Stripe, what are you doing? I asked if he was serious, and he said yes, and that his kids weren't comfortable sharing with Maddie, and since he paid for the house, he has a right to kick Maddie out of the room. I told Maddie to get her bag, and that if she doesn't have a bed, we're going home. Maybe an hour after we left, Jen came back and asked why Maddie and I left. 
I told her what happened. She asked me to come back and promised that she'd take care of her husband and the kids because she wants her kids to have a good relationship with their cousins. I said no, and shortly after we got home, I got a call from my brother yelling at me for causing a scene, creating problems between him and his wife, and being ungrateful for a free vacation. He got our parents involved, and they're agreeing that it's a free vacation and I can't be picky. Am I the asshole for leaving with Maddie? What? Okay, 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 hold on. So, he was a pompous dick. No doubt about that. And is blaming you for making a scene? And the parents, the grandparents, them getting involved in saying that it's a free vacation and you can't be picky. So it's okay to just treat people like shit if you're giving them a free vacation. And if you're receiving a free vacation, then you have to expect to be treated like shit. And that's okay. And also, you have to watch your child be treated like shit and just be okay with it. Because you know what? She's being treated like shit for free. She's being treated like shit in a nicer environment for free. Hell no. What is wrong? Well, I know what's wrong with this dude, with Uncle Stripe here. Uncle Stripe isn't anything like that. This guy is, this guy's a pompous dick. And he's raising his kids to be pompous little dicks too. But it's the parents. The parents of the kicker in here were their parents. OP and his brother's parents backing the pompous dick up. That's the part of this that I don't get at all. Why would they do that? Why would they, knowing that their grandchild is being mistreated, be like, well, it is a free vacation. Gotta take the good with the bad. Hell no. Nothing is worth that. Nothing is letting your child be treated like that. Nothing is witnessing pompous shits in the making. Nothing. I agree with OP here 100%. Leave. Leave. It's not worth being around that and having to endure it period. And I'm sorry, Jen. I'm sorry. Jen seems like a sweetheart, like her head is in the right place, but she and her husband are just parenting completely different ways. And he is like, kids, you don't have to share. We're paying for everything. Money trumps all. You know what kind of people these kids are going to become. And so does Jen, which is why she's trying so hard to combat it, but she is never going to be successful so long as Nate is there fueling the fire. And I'm sorry, but Jen can't blame OP for leaving here and I don't think she does which is probably why there are problems with her marriage with Nate now and it's totally OP's fault because he caused a scene whatever dude everyone in this story knows that Nate caused the scene every single person in the story knows that even Nate knows that even the kids know it he's just projecting onto OP here OP I think you gotta stay out of this that's where you're at now is you've been a tool for Jen to use to try to combat what her husband Nate is doing to her children but you can't be a pawn in that anymore and you can't let your child be mistreated as a pawn in that anymore you can't you just can't it's a worthy cause sure but you've done your nickel time to back out and let them battle and figure it out on their own they're probably going to end up divorced because this is an oil and water kind of mixture thing and parenting on complete opposite spectrums never really goes well so just distance distance right now is the safest thing that you can do just don't let your child be mistreated ever there's a difference between letting your child be mistreated treated and letting them learn to deal with difficult situations. I am all for letting them deal with difficult situations and learning about inequality and learning about, you know, not every opportunity is equal. We just had a video post about this the other day. Not everybody is going to have equal opportunities. Let kids learn what it's like to be disappointed. Let kids learn what it's like to want something that someone else has. But when you have an adult instructing his kids to be pompous assholes because of money, get the hell out of there. That is the situation where you have to protect your child and screw your parents for advocating for pompous dick Nate. Nope. Nay, nay, I say. Nay, nay. <laughs> Hey there again, it's Dusty Thunder with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for not doing anything hostessy for my in-laws visit, given I'm three weeks postpartum? Why are they all complicated tonight? My husband's family lives on the other side of the country. We had our first child at the height of COVID, so my husband's parents, sister, and her family did not meet him in person until his first birthday. I just delivered our second two weeks ago. And my husband's family, four adults and three kids, asked if they could all visit during spring break to see the baby, which is the end of next week. I said okay. Although the seven of them would be staying at an Airbnb, I know they would be spending all day, every day at our home to see the kids. I told my husband to make sure they know we will be ordering in every meal and be on eggs and cereal and some drinks and snacks, i.e. chips and fruit. I wasn't planning to get much else. 
I'm also tired and up with the baby all night. I'm still trying to get breastfeeding established and I'm exhausted at the very thought of seven people being in my house every day for a week while I'm trying to nurse and rest and manage a toddler's big emotions around a new sibling. His response was, well, we're going to need X and Y for my parents and X for the kids and I was thinking one day I can make X. And he started describing needing to get the best bread and the best cheese, all of which would involve him taking trips to numerous stores and being gone for hours when I need help. He even said he was going to ask my dad, who occasionally buys us some specialty grocery stuff that I ask for and drops it off, to pick up a bunch of items for them. At this point, I got really mad. I said, I am not trying to go above and beyond here and play host when I'm three weeks postpartum. They can eat the stuff from the grocery store even if it's not the best and deal for five days. He then told me, I sound spiteful. I'm also frustrated because when his family visits, my husband checks out a bit. He plays with his nephews and chats for hours with his brother-in-law, and I know I'm going to end up being the one setting out snacks, tidying up, etc., while the in-laws just want to hold the baby which honestly is not helpful to me. He seems more concerned with his family having fun, the visit being a good time, and with them being comfortable than with me getting what I need. I'm worried he isn't going to have my back, so I will have to be the one to draw hard lines with his family to protect myself and my own well-being. We got into a big fight about it. I yelled at him and I'm not really talking to him right now. They show up next week and I'm feeling a lot of anger and resentment about it. So am I the asshole for not lifting a finger for my visitors? Update! Really grateful for the support. I honestly didn't know if I was just being hormonal or if I was justified in being annoyed with my husband. Wanted to clarify a few things in response to some of the comments. My in-laws have not said that they expect us to do anything or have asked for anything. My husband is the one indicating that we should be playing host to them while they're here. So maybe they will show up with sleeves rolled up. If past visits are any indication, I don't think that that will be the case, as any help they provide or try to instruct their kids to provide ends up being more work for me than help. My mother-in-law has an autoimmune disease and is blind. She will be unable to help and I absolutely don't expect anything from her. My father-in-law takes care of her needs. I know all she wants is to hold her granddaughter as a newborn since she can't see her on FaceTime, which she wasn't able to do with my older one. I fully understand and support this, but I also feel guilty because I don't want her in the house eight hours a day for five days straight. That's a lot. I have asked them all to take COVID tests before flying, to wear masks in the airport and on the plane, and that when they are directly holding the baby, they also wear a mask. I know they will respect those rules because my mother-in-law also has an autoimmune disease, so they're used to taking extra health precautions. Okay, that's the end of that story. My gut reaction to this is if you are visiting someone with a fresh out of the oven newborn, and they're going to be staring, staying at an Airbnb, but if you're going to be visiting them, period, whether it's for 30 minutes or eight hours or a week or whatever, if you're visiting someone with a fresh out of the oven newborn, you are there to help. Yes, you get to hold the baby too. But while you're there, you are there to give mom a little respite, to give her a little bit of a break. And to say, you know what, this is a great time for you to go take a nap if you need to. Like, let me know what the plan is during this time. I will help in whatever way that I can. I am here to help. If you go visit someone with a newborn, you have to expect to be there to help. That's my reaction here. I wouldn't visit someone unless it was like a legit, like a five, 10 minute thing where it's like, oh my gosh, like we get to hold this brand spanking new baby. And I know that you guys have lots of shit going on. So we'll get out of here. Or what can we help you with? But people just showing up and her husband expecting to have to entertain them and being more concerned about that than he is with helping with the baby is problematic. It's their second kid. So what I was thinking was this could also be hubby freaking out a little bit because with babies, more so on the, you know, the birthing part or the brand spanking new baby, three weeks is still new, but it's three weeks old. Sometimes we guys freak out. And when we freak out because things are new, we focus on what we can control. And for him, maybe freaking out was, I know I can control X, Y, Z, and I know that I can be effective here, so I'm going to focus my efforts and my time and my energy on those things. However, this is his second kid. So that argument in my mind quickly fell apart once I saw that it was his second kid. So it can't be him freaking out. Maybe it is. You can still freak out when you have a newborn, but it hasn't been that long since the first one was here, and maybe he does feel a little bit useless on that side, but you just have to get over that shit, and you just have to roll up your sleeves and do the work. This is a teamwork thing. You can't just dump it on your wife and the approach that he's taking here is going to land him in a spot where he is dumping it on his wife. So not only is her body recovering from pushing another human out, but she's also going to be running solo for a while while he's entertaining guests. And that's a big problem here. So hubby obviously is taking 
the wrong path here and whether he realizes it or not is the issue and maybe maybe that's the bigger issue here so she did bring it up to him i was gonna say if she doesn't bring this up and say i see you getting wrapped up in this i see you getting swept away with this i need you to be focused on helping with the baby at this point it's still very much a tag team 24 7 we're just surviving hanging by a thread approach because that's how it is with newborns she didn't really say that she said i'm not trying to go above and beyond here and play host when i'm three weeks postpartum them they can eat stuff from the grocery store even if it's not the best and deal for five days and then he said she sounds spiteful not the best choice of words dude but she didn't really clarify the big issue here and the big issue was that he was getting distracted by this and all of his energy was going to this she could see where this path led and i would have liked to see her say that to him and say look this is what i think is going to happen and i need you to head that off because i really need you to be focused on this and that kind of clear communication in these kind of situations especially when you're both hanging by a thread and you're having to take the tag team like we're just surviving approach that kind of communication is super important but at that point you're also running on fumes you're both snapping at each other it happens to every couple with a brand new baby you're just in that mode where everything is difficult but having a bunch of family come visit and be there all day every day not overnight but all day every day for like a week is just it's too much it's five days holy shit ah! If they're there for five days, they better be there to help. And maybe that's what OP needs to say to her husband here. And also, we're getting distracted by trying to play host for them. That's not what this is about. If they are here to see the baby, then the focus is on the baby. They can figure the rest of their shit out. You don't have to be their cruise director. But I think he's taking the wrong path here. I completely understand where she's at here. And no, OP, you are not the asshole for not doing anything host to see for your in-laws because they should be there to help you. They should be doing host to see things for you. They should be ordering in food for you. They should be taking over for a while so you can shower. They should be taking over for a while so that you can nap. They should be pitching in to help you out. Because when people visit someone with a newborn baby, that's how it's supposed to to work in my opinion uh op no you're not the asshole at all here maybe some clear communication to the husband about what you foresee happening and what you would like to see happen would be a good idea it's possible that he could just be so fried that he doesn't see where he's heading and you know what candy thunder has to do that with me sometimes she knows me well enough to see where my brain is going and to see where my actions are going to lead to and for her to pull me aside and say okay here's what i think you're getting ready to do and we need to avoid that and especially if you're in a time like this where you're just fried and you're on autopilot and you're just following actions without really thinking them through i appreciate that kind of communication if anything you know i want her to over communicate communicate with me because then I know I can fix things if I know about them and I'm not always going to see them. So maybe he's in the same boat here and he just doesn't see where he's headed and he needs her to say, hey, ass hat, this is what's happening. Fix it. It's possible. <laughs> Hey again, it's Dusty Thunder with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the ass cannot for wanting to take my kids on vacation without my husband? Maybe this is OP from the last story. It's just like three years into the future. Hi, I made a throwaway as my husband knows my main Reddit account. This all happened tonight. Let me start this by saying my husband and I hardly ever argue and we have a loving relationship. I'm 34 and my husband is 32. We have two children, a daughter eight and a son six, and are hoping for just one more. Through some good investments after my husband got a very large inheritance from his grandmother, we bought a new house, as well as a vacation home at a large lake that my family would go camping at every summer for well over 75 years. It's amazing since I have always been in the very low end of the middle class, if not lower class, my whole life. I'm a teacher, and my husband works in cybersecurity. Obviously, I get a lot more time off than he does. He only gets two weeks off a year. We've been able to do one or two short vacations a year, usually four days with his time off. But with our lake house a two and a half hour drive away, I said something to my husband about periodically taking the kids up there in the summer for a few days or even a week at a time. He said it wouldn't work because he couldn't get off the time. So I said it was fine. And while it was a bit daunting, I would be fine with taking them myself and just getting to have quality time with them at the lake, going mini golfing, getting ice cream, etc. Not only that, but he's extremely picky about vacations in general. I've wanted to go abroad for for three weeks to visit my aunt who lives in Ireland. The last time I went to Ireland, I was 20 for my cousin's wedding, and my husband was annoyed and said he can only take five days off. 
I'm not paying that much in flights and taking two young children to another country with a five hour time difference just to go for five days. We ended up not going because I felt guilty that he couldn't go. I brought up that I really wanted to be able to go to the lake with our children besides the week we go up with all of our family and have quality time with them. Usually when the rest of my family is there, my kids want to spend all their time with my cousin's kids. He told me he was really hurt that I would even ask to go on vacation without him. It ended up turning into an argument as I tried to explain that we have a lake house that will essentially sit empty for all but one week out of the year and everything I typed above and he said I was being a dick for blaming him that we couldn't go on vacations while he was trying to further his career. I'm not sure what to do. I was so excited when we bought the house at one of my favorite places on earth. Not only that, but now having the means to travel and see family far away or go to places I've never been before and not even being able to do it without upsetting my life partner is incredibly frustrating. I went to my sister about it who told me she thought it was weird I even feel okay going without him. I feel like I'm stuck between feeling like a selfish wife versus wanting to enjoy finally having money. Several problems here. I think she kind of lumped together the whole Ireland trip discussion and the lake house, which are two very different things. I think that Ireland is something that you should want your spouse to go on and probably not want to go without them. However, if it was like a, you know, I'm going to go rediscover my heritage kind of thing and you're going solo or you're bringing your sister or whatever, that's a little bit different. But the lake house, I feel like if you guys bought a lake house, go freaking use the lake house. Man, as a dad... I feel like I would be understanding would want them to go to the lake house as often as possible. You paid the money for the lake house to just sit there? Enjoy it. You paid the money so that you could enjoy it, so that your kids could go enjoy it. And yeah, it sucks that he has to work, but he's punishing the rest of his family because he isn't available to go with them. And with the lake house, I don't understand that. I think he needs to be okay with them going and enjoying that every damn day during the summer. Let him freaking stay up there and he can come up on weekends, whatever. Let them enjoy it. Or he can drive up after he gets off work and then drive back afterward. There are people who drive that far for work. Ireland is a different deal. That I get. But the lake house, if you guys got it for a reason, like let your kids go enjoy it and don't punish them because you can't get off those days. That doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like he's got to be okay with it. I would highly caution against OP bringing up the whole enjoying having money thing because it's dangerous because it was an inheritance from his grandmother. And if she brings it up, not saying he's going to do this, but he could take the angle of, well, it was an inheritance from my grandmother. If I can't be there to enjoy it, I don't feel like we should enjoy it, which is bullshit. You know, it's his family. It's his children. Like, let them enjoy it. But if you bring up the money thing, I feel like he could he could pull that card. So I don't know that that's a good idea. I do think you have to separate out the whole Ireland discussion and the lake house discussion into two separate things. Husband should be okay with you guys going to the lake house. I feel like he should. I don't feel like you're the asshole for wanting to take your kids to the lake house that you guys bought just because he can't get off work. No, you should be able to go do that. Ireland is a separate issue. You need to wait for your hubby for that one. Lake house. Why was he okay with buying it, but not using it? You know what I mean? That making no sense to me. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again, and I have another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for demanding my ex-girlfriend pays me back for the trip to Disney World I bought her when we were together? This sounds like a douchey move, doesn't it? Seven months ago, my 29 male girlfriend, 27 female Tara, and I were celebrating our first year together. And I had a surprise present for her. A whole trip to Disney World for the two of us. Tara is a big Disney fan and had already visited the park many times, but I never went in my life. I was puzzled because after the initial excitement, she started looking a little sad, so I inquired about it. Tara had told me she always wanted to go to Disney World with her older sister, explaining that going there was their dream when they were growing up, but their dad was mean and never took them. Even when she was able to go with friends or boyfriends, they never got to go together because Tara's sister was always busy with college or with her husband and children. Tara said that it would be more meaningful of me to give her a trip she could do alone with her sister as a way to fulfill that dream. I got dizzy after this as it sounded strange to me. She had never talked about her dad in a bad way or mentioned anything about this sisterly dream. She calmed me down, talking a lot about how we could have countless opportunities to go other places together in the future. Tara and insisted that this was the perfect moment to do it with her sister because she was getting a divorce and would have more free time. I soon transferred all the tickets and reservations to her so she could organize everything with her sister. Oh no, dude, you didn't. No, 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 no. 
The issue is that a few weeks after all this, Tara broke up with me. I was blindsided and devastated because I felt that everything was going great between us, but ultimately I tried to be strong and move on. I totally forget about the Disney World issue at first, and when I began thinking about it again, decided it would be better to let it go. Is that a Disney pun? That's a Disney pun, bro. Come on now. I didn't want to start a conflict about it and ruin the chances of us remaining friends. Tara started dating another guy very quickly, and in less than three months, they were engaged. You know what? We'll just do this again. It felt weird to me, but I still send her a text congratulating them and she answered me very sweetly. I am a follower of Tara's Instagram lives and last week she mentioned that she was going to Disney World with her fiance! Ah! If only there was some way where we could see this coming, right? I mean, everyone else in the entire freaking world saw this coming. OP did not. This seems like the kind of guy who answers whenever the scammer calls and actually sends them all of his money. This seems like this kind of guy. I mean, I get it. If it's your girlfriend, your significant other, they have total trust. But man, he got suckered hard. I texted her about it and she said that her sister dropped out of the trip because she had to go to a wedding. So she was going with her fiance instead. I was very troubled by this and we started an argument. I told her that this was not the deal and that she should pay me all the money back I originally spent for the trip. Tara told me she didn't have to do anything and that I had zero power because everything was under her name. She accused me of being a stalker and blocked me everywhere. I feel really weird after all of this because I think I am in the right and what she did was not good. But I also may have reacted too strongly and ruined the cordial relationship we have had since the breakup. Am I the asshole? Ah, uh, no, you're not the asshole, man. You're the dumbass. You're the dumbass, bro. How did you fall for this? Like, what? I don't think he has a leg to stand on here legally at all because he gifted them to her and he transferred everything over to her. Yes, he got screwed. He's a dumbass. That's all there is to this, right? There's nothing else beyond this. I mean, he didn't have to transfer everything everything over to her. He didn't have to do that. I think he could have kept everything under his umbrella still and as the trip got closer had their names on them but he didn't have to transfer ownership of everything over to her man come on how do you not see these red flags flying around I mean I would be canceling tickets but he's transferred everything away from him now so he essentially just gave her like thousands of dollars dude I think he got scammed I think he got scammed by this girl and you know what I would do if I were him actually because obviously he's not going to get anywhere with her Reach out to the fiance and at least man to man, let him know what's going on and be like, bro, you need to know that you are traveling to Disney on her ex-boyfriend's dime. There's a decent chance that if he isn't in on this scam, he will feel bad about that. I wouldn't want to go somewhere on an ex-boyfriend's dime. It feels wrong, right? You just don't want to do that. So maybe he's a better person than she is if he's not in on it. And you can reach out to him and be like, hey, this is what's going on. Please help me out here. Tell her to transfer the shit back to me. And of course, she's going to deny it. Of course, she's going to have some sob story cooked up. And you probably need to be ready to go ahead and warn fiance about that. But have receipts, bro. Show them receipts. He's the best shot you have of getting your money back. It seems like this guy's just way too nice and got completely taken advantage of. Poor dude. I mean, dumbass, but poor dude. This poor guy. Tried to do something super, super sweet and just got his ass scammed off. Ah, uh, this is what happens to the nice guys, isn't it? The first comment I'm seeing, NTA, holy shit, OP, you got absolutely screwed by her. She absolutely planned this and she is straight up Disney evil herself. Paging Maleficent, this is great. NTA, you need to accept some hard truths. She was cheating on you with her fiance when you got the tickets. She was sad because she thought she would have to go with you instead of him. She never intended to take her sister. It was always going to be her real boyfriend. You do not have a cordial relationship. You are not friends. She doesn't like you. She never did. You are her rube. And now that she can't use you anymore, she doesn't want you in her life. So salt the earth. If you purchase the tickets and you still have any kind of account ownership to them at all, canceling the tickets, canceling those credit card charges, cancel whatever you can because it, is it fraud? I don't know that it is because he transferred everything over to her. Now, one of these tickets was a gift. To clarify, he was giving her one of the tickets as a gift. He transferred both over to her, but that initial gift is just one ticket. So one of those he was going to give her no matter what. One of them she scammed him out of. Maybe he does have a leg to stand on, but I don't, I don't know. I cancel the card, cancel every account connected to it to see if you can cancel the tickets, but also to protect yourself from whatever else she got her hands on. Because if she screwed you out of this, she's probably screwed you out of more already and could keep ticking. So protect yourself, man. And uh, 
good gravy, man. This is the kind of scenario that turns a really sweet guy into an asshole. And I think every sweet guy encounters some kind of situation like this that ends up hardening him into being an asshole. And maybe not a total asshole, but to the point where he he's at least protective of himself. He's not going to allow himself to be taken advantage of. And I think that's the unfortunate path of a lot of sweet people where they get taken advantage of and they just get hardened by it and they start giving up on humanity and become an asshole. And then once they're an asshole, they become more attractive to people. So go figure. Figure that out. I don't know. I don't understand it. OP is Korg from the last two Thor movies. Hey, uh, I'm going to start a revolution. Anybody want to come? Oh, yeah. Mixed dead, mate. Oh, mixed dead. I've just felt bad, so I'm carrying him around. <laughs> OP's ex is definitely giving Ursula vibes. Uh, Court probably would consider it a, a gift. Pain causes change, Natalie. Look at that. I say that a lot, and actually Candy Thunder brought it up to me today or yesterday because she was thinking about something that happened with one of her kids and about how the outcome of that situation or the punishment of that situation was something that did create pain, but it was pain that needed to create change. So she actually brought it up, and she was like, I thought about what you say about pain creating change, and I'm like, look at that. Look at that. It's another proud pop moment for me oh my goodness i do have a lot of isms like that <laughs>